I don't have a song to sing. Yeah, I don't have anything to sing. Off Damn it, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, no, you could have sang. I was, I was wanting sang. to hear the song, the special song you sang. What special song you sang? Kyle. Special song. He does it in. I don't know the special song. <laughs> Rolling initiative. You could say that one. Three so, best yeah. friends with two friends. No, I was trying to think of the other one. I, I thought of like three songs today and and very much like last Saturday's one shot. I didn't write them down and I was just hoping I would remember it on the spot <laughs> and nice. much like last Saturday's game. It really left me quite a bit. Yeah. Well, before we do that, why don't you say who we are? I could do that. We, hi everybody, welcome to the Murder Hobo <laughs> Inc. Challenge. If you're watching us on Twitch, you already know we're Murder Hobo Inc. What you may not know is this is the show Between the Rolls, where we review our past week's game, as well as talk about other things. In this case, we're going to talk about a future game, which I'm very excited about, but I don't get to play in because Frank's a dick and let the new guys play in it. I'm not... <laughs> Don't worry, though. I'm cool. It's He's fine. not better. Uh -uh. I'm, I'm demanding Frank let you play in mine. No, no, no. It's okay. I no, don't you play have to play. I want to play on Scott's. You got to play. <laughs> I don't yeah. like you. you I don't like you, Mom. I want to go hang out with Dad. Yeah. <laughs> hey. He gives me a Nerf ball every time he visits. <laughs> Here's the thing. Now he Kyle. Actually, Kyle, bought the, uh, all, Kyle already bought all the books for the game I'm running, so... <laughs> It'd be nice if you actually get to try to play it. Oh, Scott. Uh, yeah. Kate, Caitlin, our murder hobo, who's on the Thursday night show, Cacophony, she found some pretty choice first edition stuff, man, in a oh, shop yeah. in Arizona. That's I mean, right. They did. Oh, just amazing. Amazing stuff. Had you in mind when I saw that. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, Scott would love that. And Look at his seen. lips. I mean, almost mint condition. I mean, near mint. Yum, so. yum, yum. I need to have. She uh, isn't going to part with that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. But uh, between the roles, uh, that's what we are. We're going to thank yep. our sponsors tonight, which are Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, if you're rolling like shit, Pirate Dog Dice. Blame them. They it don't roll like shit. They roll well, actually. I don't know. Mine always rolls on shit. And luckily, I decided a long time ago, shit was six. I have mine. Oh, it works up. perfectly for me. That means it's rolling well. <laughs> oh, uh, and after that, our other sponsor, Oddfish Games, uh, with their Adventure Sense. If your game stinks, Adventure Sense. That's that's why. They'll make your room smell better, even if your or game worse. stinks. Okay. Unless or you worse. get sewer, because apparently sewer will make it smell worse. And according to Frank, we're all getting that sent to us for Christmas. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can... God, I freaking hope not. Unmarked envelopes, so they're already open. So as soon as you open you it, you open it just. <laughs> oh man! All yeah. right, but real quick, let's go around the cameras here and let's introduce ourselves real quick. Starting with David, since you're on my top left, and you're the top left just in my heart. Around. <laughs> exactly. Aww. Hi, folks. I'm David. I am. Uh, I am. Zadar on our Thursday night show, Cacophony. Um, I'm here a lot on BTR. And um, every once in a blue moon, I play on a Saturday show like I did this past Saturday, which was a great one. So uh, anyway, that's me. I'm just an avid uh, game player. Um, try to write a little bit, but you know, none of it gets to see the light of day anyway. So not anyway, yet. not yet. Well, I could. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you have to that's play me. a private game with him. And yeah, gotta test it, it first. Exactly, gotta test it. Exactly. <laughs> All right, talking to the next Galby Mouther, uh, we have. Wait, I think that's a monster in D and D. Anyway, gibbering, gibbering Mouther, <laughs> oh, gibbering Mouther, Carol. Me? Okay, so yeah. hi everyone, my name is Carol, <laughs> I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and a commission mini painter, and you know, you actually forgot the rest of the info that we usually do at the top of this show. 
I was it's going a... to wait uh, until oh, after yeah, you she... introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, that bull... way I can be like, do you like these people? They're entertaining. You can follow them on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Look at our archive on YouTube. <laughs> if you want to shoot some shit about some D&D stuff, you can go to our Discord channel. Uh, if you like RPG gifts of people getting stabbed in the back or maybe even a bard sitting on top of a wine barrel with a huge maybe. schlong hanging out... <laughs> You can that find that not... on our RPG store. No, you can't. You but can't most importantly, guys, if the first two people have interest you into wanting to play D&D, you can harass us on Twitter, harass us at Gmail, and say, hey, we want to play in a one-shot. Mpoboink at gmail.com. That's right. But we're done talking about us. We're going <laughs> to talk about a special... Special you... guest, and unfortunately, he's downgraded to guest status because he doesn't show up all the time. But Aww. it just makes him more special when he shows up. It is. It's Scott. Why don't yeah. you introduce yourself? So yeah, hi, my name is Scott. Um, I um, go by <clears throat> Monica on. Um, tw- is it Twitter? Yeah, Twitter. Yeah, that Twitter. thing. <laughs> yeah, Twitter. One, the one with the little floppy birds and the tweets. No, the um, flappy birds. The- Flappy birds. Floppy. <laughs> Floppy birds are dead. They're dead. Floppy That's sad. Birds. That is deceased. <laughs> um, a DM Poobah, and uh, I'm a I'm primarily a uh, primarily a DM and uh, or GM, I should say, to be to be correct, since we have multiple game systems that we <clears throat> that we like to that like to play here on the uh, murder hubbo wink and that's true i used to be a lot more regular than i have been now unfortunately um with uh with work and uh covid and such as that uh, i would think would have more time to sit on my ass and play games but unfortunately <laughs> i don't <laughs> i don't have never more. works out we <laughs> miss you <laughs> it never works out like that but i will be hosting uh, and DMing a uh, a one shot in uh, in one uh, e in uh, first edition D anD D, so I'll be talking about that a little bit tonight. And um, um, it's good to be back. It's good. To, uh, it's good to see my friends here again. Yeah. It's always great to have you on. It's really <laughs> good to see you, man. Oh, that that was heartwarming. I I can't think of anything else to say, honestly. <laughs> Come buckets. Okay. What? <laughs> oh, what my God. Oh, go. Kyle. Oh, this Think is for mature audiences audience only. Is only really there you go. So you never give you. that out anymore either because we figure just anybody who's already found us. Does it really knows. matter these days? No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. My three-year-old watches this, and he he has an interesting vocabulary. I'll bet I'm he sure. does. <laughs> this week he learned the term "schlong." So. <laughs> not yet. He's not watching right now. He watches the videos on the YouTube. Uh, ah, okay. Okay. That's it's past his bedtime, worse. guys. Let's be reasonable. I'm a good parent. Yeah, he's uh, the good dad. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. All right, but let's go ahead and get into uh, 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 this past three shows that we did. Uh, we had Olympiad, which is our cacophony soap opera on Thursday. We had How These Twits Stole Christmas, or How the Cult <laughs> Stole Christmas. Uh, Scott, you may remember that a year ago we were talking about How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Mm-hmm. I put it into plan, and it was awful. Uh, <laughs> it was good. Okay, don't listen to him. It was good. And then was we had Sundays. Drawback. Uh, uh, Fartar game with the Franks. We heard you like. Why Franks. do they sell Franks in packages of eight and condoms in packages of three? <laughs> what the? Why, Kyle? Why, Kyle? Do you know? I don't know. No. <laughs> I assume because you could fit like three. Franks into oh my one god! And then Why don't you go oh, no. try that? Oh, Why don't you go try that and tell us how it works? I thought it, this was going to be the good something. Lord did not bless me with three francs. I thought this was going to be something <laughs> spiritual, like when he asked the question in Bulletproof Monk. But no, no. oh my god! No. So, so I assume then we're talking about cacophony first. We're going to talk about cacophony first. And Carol, you are a wonderful. You're not the guest. You're the co-host at this point. That's right. Because leading on to the next thing. Uh, I don't know if Carol or Scott watched it, but David did take a part of it as he uh, 
does every Thursday. He hogs that <laughs> spot pretty good. Won't let go of it. Nope. He's like my kid when he has a shoe in his mouth. He just won't let it go. Uh, but tell us about Olympiad on Thursday. What Olympiad. Happened? So the Olympics come to cacophony. So, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it is. It was a very interesting episode. No combat. Um, hmm. Lots of competitions. We had to pick competitions built on two skills that each of us had. And for some reason, our gnome, <laughs> Carrie, went with strength for her since she was like the subject of the first challenge and all that. So that was that was a rough one. <laughs> that was a rough one. She had to pull a cart up a hill loaded with rocks. It was yeah, it was a lot of fun. Frank came up with some really interesting challenges. Um, Zadar's challenges were, uh, yeah, pretty interesting. I took performance as one of them. So, which basically resulted in a talent composition as an Olympic uh, event, uh, which kind of devolved into Zadar's rendition of a Bollywood dance that, that somehow turned into what is known now in, on Murder Hobo as the banana dance, thanks to Frank. So, anyway. <laughs> Get some helicoptering bet. going on in there. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh the episode uh pretty much wrapped up. I mean, your heroes ended up walking away with the laurels. We won won the competitions for cacophony, brought uh brought glory to our fair city. And on upon doing that, some of the other emissaries that participated that were there for this conference that had been going on for a couple episodes now hmm. um offered us uh jobs or just opportunities in their homelands and basically we have to make a choice so we're still <laughs> behind the scenes we're still trying to figure it out i mean um, you got like two days to you to to just figure stay that out problem. man hey you know what it's like when you're trying to talk to your cohorts on a show it's just like you know things take a while so anyway so, uh, so yeah, we have choices. Uh, we have like uh, the Telosians, we have the Sensians, the uh, Hymonians, uh, just a uh, just lot of tough choices. Anything from, you know, hunting a frog beast, a abominable Yeti type beast, uh, gosh, um, you know, opportunities to actually just uh, kick back and just, uh, yeah, hang out in a country for no apparent reason at all. You know, there's an ulterior motive for that folks. But uh, anyway, that's how it come. Uh, that's how it ended. And uh, yeah, so you'll have to turn, you know, tune in next week to find out what we decide. Cause it we sounds are, like a great you mean episode. On, you mean two days from now? Well, two days from now. Yeah, two days from yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, and, unless we screw it up and it ends up getting pushed back another way. Quite week. possibly. Quite possibly, I yeah. imagine. But uh, yeah, folks, we're leaving Cacophony. So we're still the Cacophony Adventurers Guild, but we're leaving Cacophony. So we can always come back. Aww. We're leaving. They're sailing away. away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was our show, folks. No, so, Thursday, yeah. Yeah. On to Saturday. Man, that's interesting that he went with the Olympic with the skills and everything like that. And then this past Saturday, I was just like, I'm gonna throw a skill challenge in there. See how that works. Yeah, but, interesting uh, how that played out. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what? We're gonna skip one E tonight. We're gonna talk about skills because it kind of lines no. up. <laughs> no, Scott's here for one E, so we're doing that. Ow. Bad. Fine. Well, All what right. the hell? Skills what the hell did you write, man? Tell everyone what you wrote because it was cool. Uh, well, um, partially uh, written about a year ago. Like I said, I threw a bone to to Scott, but last year, last Christmas, last third December. Uh, we had a theme month where we all decided uh, a bunch of one shots and we all came up with a Christmas one shot. I think that was Blake, Frank, Scott and I, and we were talking about how mm -hmm. making 
movies and such like that into a one shot would turn out. And we ended up going with How the Grinch Stole Christmas because it was Christmas and why not? It was low hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> uh, and so talking about that, uh, um, and then just adding a few things on here and there and finding out we had a new player and uh, wanting to make sure they got the entire gambit. Uh, our four adventures uh, uh, carved the roast beast, uh, attempted to steal the star from the Christmas tree <laughs> and left not even a can of who hash or a crumb too small for a mouse. Nope. It- Towns as a cult of Mammon, the devil lord for greed and selfishness and avarice and all that fun stuff. Maybe I don't know. There's a lot of big words I just said, and I don't have that college education like some of these other folks. Here. You're on the right track, so oh, okay. you are. <laughs> yeah, I, that sounds right. Hmm? Sounds right uh, to me. And so our four adventures created uh, uh, to titular characters. Uh, to run through the town of Wyopolis, or honestly, I was too lazy that night, and I was just like, "Yeah, screw it, it's Whoville." I'm it's not going to come up with the stupid <laughs> names. I'm going to keep you saying were. Whoville. But, but that's fine because we created actual characters from the story. Because mm-hmm. I played Cindy Lou, mm-hmm. Dave was the Grinch. Um, we had the ex mayor Martha. What the hell was her name? Martha no. No, Martha Martha May Martha May is, uh the former lover of the Grinch. Oh, that's well I knew she had a crush childhood on him. And then, crush. then yeah, yeah she was Ernie the crush. and Ernie played Max the dog. And that was oh, he I thought he killed it. I, I got an Max. email that said, Hey Kyle, can I play as a dog? What would that look like? And I was like, <laughs> Ernie, really? I was expecting maybe like Caitlin to be like, I want to be a dog or an animal. Uh, But we figured out something pretty easy. And uh, so he got to do some Eldritch Barks. Hey, hey, Ernie, tell you the truth. Ernie spent most of the campaign as various animals. So this really wasn't a surprise. I was about to say, it wasn't a stretch. It really shouldn't have been. What's wrong? I don't watch the campaign. I I take no part in that whatsoever. (laughs) Yeah, bullshit. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, oh but Carol, Peter. why don't you talk about things on your end? And if you folks have questions, I can clarify some stuff. Oh, the in terms of the game, I mean, yeah. it was say what happened. It was a ton of fun. I said the one the one drawback I thought was the skill challenge was too long. But other than that, but I thought still it was well constructed. It was just too long. When you get something where people have to describe and come up with creative things to do. You probably don't want to go. How many rounds did we go? Like six, six or seven rounds. By that point, I was running. Especially one, you want people to do different thing, use different skills. Well, we only have so many skills, so I was running out of ideas. I wasn't gonna make you do (laughs) any. So, but but I mean, but I still thought it was well constructed. I liked the I liked the way I liked the um, the story. That's where you could either hinder. Uh, you could hinder the cultists so you could go get successes. Now, you mentioned, you know, I was going, I was like, come on, we got to get successes. Because I realized that was the only way we were going to end this is we had to hit <laughs> a certain number of successes. And while, okay, it was good to delay the, to fuck with the cultists, that wasn't going to get us to the, to the to the goal we needed to get to. So that's why I was like trying to go, come on, we need more successes. Well, behind the scenes, uh, if it weren't for uh, uh, several people hindering the cultists, yeah, you would not oh, have gotten any of the presents, and things would uh, have turned no, no. out a lot worse. No, but I felt like we needed, like when it was, I don't know, there were too many. That's why I was always getting the gifts because we have at least two people who are doing things other than getting gifts, either helping, aiding, or whatever, or hindering. I thought hindering was fun, by the way. Um, I. Before I tried to hinder once, and I don't think it worked out real well. What did you end up? I don't remember. I tried. I tried so, to tell him to go go check out the bodies in the, uh, uh, you know, in the great hall. No, oh, that's right. There, no, that, that and I worked. Fucking, it did work. I didn't did roll. Work. It wasn't as um, successful as back. you would have liked, but yes, it did. Work. Nope, it was yeah, because that was my worst roll, but it was yeah. my highest skill. 
Uh, so clarify and make sure things aren't going uh, 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 over everybody's head. Uh, the, uh, we started the night off where uh, uh, the party... The Roast Beast was awesome, by the way. Based off against awesome. Roast Beast, which is a a pig swan centaur thing with tusk and sharp teeth. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it was an undead creature until the radiant light of our heroes cooked it good and clean again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun playing a paladin against that thing. Yeah. Well, you smushed I me good, I honestly thought though. it would go a lot faster than it did, but... Well, that's because you left the cultist in the room. I did. And, and if, you, if we all had focused... For. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. If we all focused on the beast, it would have gone a lot faster. But I actually like the fight better that you did leave it in there. I thought it made it, it, made it far more interesting than just, just us going up there. And it was an interesting monster. I don't get me wrong. But I think it would have... It was far more interesting to have that extra element sure. so that was a, no i thought that the first fight was was really good yeah so yeah, yeah. Uh, and then after that they decided to start robbing the place and hey. that's where i brought from 4e a skill challenge into 5e which was really why i designed the whole uh, adventure to begin with was because i wanted to try this thing out uh, turns out it takes a long time, uh, and there are some kind of things you want to do to kind of make it more entertaining. Although, I don't know, did you guys want to describe more of what you were doing, or were you guys okay with me describing what you were doing? Oh no, it was, it was that didn't that didn't bother me. But that's what was was that was what took all the time was trying to figure out something creative because we want to do that on the show too. We have an audience, so we want to entertain them. You know, we don't. So that's why I think maybe fewer rounds and stuff with more emphasis or with that emphasis on the descriptions. <laughs> but I thought, I mean, as I said, it was just, it was long. I mean, but otherwise it was good. Sure. I built uh, the Grinch <laughs> as like the ultimate thief. So I yeah, mean, he was great. He well, <laughs> <laughs> the nat 20 helped a lot that first round. <laughs> and with a plus 13 for, for oh, a sleight yeah. of hand, that was like uh, gloves of uh, thievery, folks, is what I had. And that's in the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide. So that's where I got that from. So, but yeah. Yep. I want to. Second Devil next year. <laughs> That should be the follow-up for next year's game. Mammon? What uh, the yes. party was not aware of is that night that the cult of Mammon was doing a summoning ritual where they were going to sacrifice the roast beast, all the presents in town, and a tree laden down with silver. Uh, and unfortunately for the cultists, the party did screw up at least two of their three sources of the summoning. However, unfortunate for everybody, the summoning did work. Wait, so how did it work if we screwed up two of the elements that they needed? Uh, it was less. So then he comes back as a lesser being he that we will can come defeat next year. The only reason he came was he was promised lots and lots of money. And good stuff. And when he showed up and you didn't have that stuff, he wrecked the town quite thoroughly. And so, yeah, I guess maybe I'll write something for you guys next oh, year. Oh, if Ernie had gotten the... Did Ernie get the star? He did not get the star. If he um, had gotten the star, would that have stopped it? Hmm. That was a big, that was like the most pricey thing probably on that tree. Probably the most pricey thing on the tree, yeah. Would um, it stop the Kim coming? I'm going to cry. Mm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I didn't, You're the GM, I, you should know. <laughs> that's the secret of being a, a GM. Sometimes <laughs> I surprise myself with what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, um, But keep that in mind i would love to come bring these i love these characters and i'd like to i'd love to come back and do cindy Lou who the paladin would absolutely love to come back and freaking take out that damn 
devil. Yeah, we just have to make you guys like level 18 or 20. And oh, that went so no, well the last no, time I no, did. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We're not fighting no. Mammon. No, no, it's just not a, it's not an all powerful version of him. I mean, that would make sense if they couldn't fully do the ritual. They would come back as somehow a lesser version of himself. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get it next year. Let's move on to Scott. (laughs) Let's move on to Scott. Well, we'll talk about the Franks, Fartar. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Franks. I don't remember anything else about it. I (laughs) I honestly didn't watch. (laughs) Uh, uh, like most artists, I went into a deep, dark depression after Saturday, and I was like, oh, oh, no. oh come on, on it was good. <laughs> hey, even I, for I the players. Huh? I said, even for the players, we kind of retreated back in, or at least I did. I was just like, God, I could have did something. So, but No, 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 no. I was happy. Um, <laughs> anyway, Fartar, mm-hmm. the, the Franks, the generational family. They had called a lot Bartard? of <coughs> Fartar. It was the name of the episode. Okay, I thought you said Fartards. I'm like, ah, what? Even... The... <laughs> <laughs> that better though, honestly. That, that sounds. What is a Fartard? <laughs> is that some new? Is that some new thing the kids are doing? <laughs> you know what? It probably is. <laughs> it probably is. You've heard of black tar heroin? This is yes. Fartar. Tar. Tar. Yeah, it stinks okay. and it's brown. <laughs> Don't ask what they cut it with. That's like. Oh, Don't ask man. what they cut it with. That's good because it's obviously the cheese. Oh. No! oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so bad. So bad. So bad. <laughs> you guys are awful. God. Oh, but from what I got, uh, I gleaned from the episode, it was mostly about labeling rights on the wine. So, and it ended <laughs> up with some, some, God, yeah, great artwork. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to catch the episode, check it out. It's in our archives. It's hilarious. It's always hilarious with that group. I mean, it's one of Frank's original groups, and it's just hysterical. So. Check it out. All we can say is baby holding an apple. But on to much. things. And Frank and Frank uploaded the labels into the Discord. So yeah, check so them now, out. So now anyone watching has to join the Discord to see. Yeah, what you have to see. Yeah, you have to join to see them. Although one of them, check it out at your own risk. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny, man. You may feel small afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised that anyone would show that and think they... I don't know. All right. Anyway. Uh... Guess he got a high score on his intimidation. (laughs) There you go. Uh, But anyway, tonight we're we're moving on to the topic. We've we've played some D&D before. And actually with this weekend, this month, we were planning on doing some a lot of interesting kind of Dungeons and Dragons, and we're even now playing a couple of new different games branching off from that in various ways. I don't know about Blue Valentine. Uh, uh, Blue Rose. Rose damn it. Blue Bells? <laughs> Blue Bells of Scotland. Is that well, what you'll you said? have a Blue Christmas if you guys don't hop in on the Blue Rose thing. I don't know anything about it, though. But, Please uh, sign uh, up. <laughs> uh, we are putting a lot of pressure on our oldest guest, uh, uh, Scott, here, <laughs> who is going to be running a first edition game of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I know I was one of those who was eager and jumping at the bit. Bit, bit is it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Jumping at the bit to be in this game, but unfortunately, I was not able to. Uh, I don't know. Scott, what do you want to talk about as far as well, okay. This game? So, um, it's uh it's um first of all, it's uh, it's gonna be a great, great uh it's gonna be a great um um great honor to be able to you know play uh, and to be able to you know DM with uh, you know, Murder Hobo Inc. again again. Um it's been a mm-hmm. while since I've been able to play. I've been I've doing <laughs> I've done some, you know, between the roles, <laughs> try to keep up, but it's been a while since I played even longer since the DM. Um, so it was, it was Kyle's idea uh, originally for us to kind of go back and go through an edition crawl, right? 
starting out with 1E and then going through the different uh, progressions of, uh, of D&D during the month of December. And uh, it's kind of like almost like a year in, year in review, D&D in review type of things. But, you know, we also branch off into some other things and apparently, um, um, you know, moving into some into some different uh, d- different gaming systems, which I'm, I'm all for. I think, you know, we should probably even try, you know, a, you know, a, a, a Starfinder or a, uh, you know, call yeah. it the right, okay, right? My, you know, but again, I'm still excited about Blue Lagoon and playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's as funny. excited as I was the first time I saw Blue Lagoon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> me too i think it was five no i think yeah i got it wrong i think it's blue velvet jeez <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. oh man i'm gonna have to take a break here in a little while um so, <laughs> so, so, so a little trip down memory lane yeah. um so anyway good freaking lord <laughs> We have all lost. I don't think anyone <laughs> has control of the stream right now. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think. I think Kyle Carl's dying. I mean, Kyle's yeah. dying. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, no, it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm, I always enjoy the chance to be able to DM with this uh, with this crew. Um, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to go back to uh, to kind of show the differences. Um, and, and since BTR with between this role is always about kind of how we play the mechanics of the game, um, how, how you know, the creative process, interaction between the DMs, then the GMs, uh, and then the players. You know, we wanted to see how that's evolved over time. So we're going to start uh, doing a game this Sunday on, uh, for first edition. So in order to speed up um, the um, um, mechanics of this, um, we're going to be doing some pre-gens. I have four pre-gens, um, and their names are going to be, um, I have them here. We're going to have Birkin, who's going to be a dwarf. Um, I think we're going to have uh, Zenithar, who is uh, going to be an elven cleric. Um, we're going to have um, Discotech or Discantique. I haven't figured out if I'm going to call him Discotech or Discotech. Call him Discotech. <laughs> Discotech. He's going to be a thief, a somewhat flamboyant character. Uh, and then Quilon, who's going to be our, uh, be our be our magic user. So we're going to have four. I decided to play, uh, decided as pregens to be a fairly balanced party. It's going to be, you know, normally you would have at least two fighter types, honestly, because so this is going to be, in essence, what you would call maybe spellcaster heavy. Because you have two spellcasters and only one, one, one melee and then one thief. But you need a thief, you need a healer, you need a magic user, you need a fighter. If you're going to have another character, you probably need another fighter, right? So, um, but mm-hmm. it, I think it's too hard for us to manage, uh, you know, you know, you know, five players. But you know, I, I have another one called 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 Hodar. If we could figure five players, I just don't know if we could mm. do that. But I do have another. I have another pre gen ready. So anyway, the idea is that oh, there's um, hope. Hope springs a lot. Oh, <laughs> so, so 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 the idea is that um, I sent out copies of a um, um, you know an abbreviated player handbook. Um, you know, just in PDF form showing the showing the you know short and curlies of how how that does and where the adventure is going to be placed in a, in a dungeon. It's going to be placed in a cavern specifically. And if those that know me a little bit, they know my obsession with, uh, with certain elements of the, of the stories, uh, el- you know, wrapping around um, um, uh, the Southern Yatils, the um, Lost Caverns at the Soja Camp, uh, the story between Igville, Grazit, um, mm-hmm. Ayuz, and Drelsna, and that whole thing. So I'm going to put the characters on the second level of the Lost Caverns of the Soja Camp and um, see how long they last. <laughs> oh, is okay. this going to be so, a play till we die? <laughs> no, it won't, be, yeah. it, it, it won't be played till you die. But, uh, but, but the important parts are going to be understanding the mechanics, and I'll try my best to, to walk through it. And I'm not going to go into the real nuts and bolts of having to do because uh, there's a lot of, you know, mathy, crunchy stuff. I'm going to try to simplify some of the things. I'll still try to honor the core of it, 
That is, you don't, the action economy is, is very, very different, right? You don't have bonus action, reaction and action and move action and dash action, all that stuff like that. You basically need to tell what they're going to do and things are broken between turns, rounds and segments. Okay. So a head of, of two handed battle axe takes longer to swing oh, God, and that's yeah. going to determine your order for when you get to go, right? If you're doing a, a, a dagger, you're going you're gonna to be able to go earlier in the order and get your attack in. Uh, and, and that kind of your initiative of what you're going to do determines when you go, right? So there, that's a very different mechanic, and, and that's going to be fun to see how that plays. Um, the characters are going to be seventh level. Um, so oh. they're going to have some, they have some pretty good spells, right? They're going to be able mm -hmm. to have access to fireball. They're going to have access to, uh, to, you know, so I think some fifth level, um, um, fifth level spells, which could do some fairly decent damage. I'm going to have them right after a good rest and we're going to be, uh, with a uh, gray Hawk magic level. So they'll all have pretty much, you know, magic armor, magic, you know, you know, probably, probably plus two or greater, uh, you know, magic weapons, several, you know, useful items. Uh, and uh, it should be, it sh you know, they should be survivable, okay, at least for a while. Um, and then, and then we'll just see how we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Um, and then uh, I, I think, Frank, I don't know, or guys, I don't know how long we were intending on playing. How long did the last time? Was it two hours? Was it one hour? Was it an hour and a half? Three hours? What? How much? How much time do I have? Two hours. Two, two to three hours. hours. Two, I think typically... they really want you to go two hours. But... <laughs> Typically, you know, you can always go three hours. Yeah, typically this show is two hours, but okay. if you go over, you go over. We'll, we'll keep playing. I understand. Well, I'll, 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 I'll try to, you know, you know, compact the things. It'll have to be a lot of theater of the mind. I won't do the, you know, I probably won't do the wandering into the teleportation bit. That's probably, <laughs> you know, that's that's a bit crazy because you can end up getting stuck there. Um, <laughs> seriously, you can't. You end up just fighting, you know, Helm tour after helm tour after helm tour after helm tour, and it sure. never ends until you die. Um, that's fun. Well, that's a good way to end the campaign at two hours. That is that is a good way to Just end keep playing. <laughs> and if they if they are able to make it to the to the to the center, then they get to, then they get to face Drelsna. Which yeah, there's no way you'll you'll kill her at all. She she'll she'll smite you down in a heartbeat. Um, but but that's fine. That'll be fun to see how to see how that nice. Um, what is it? Uh, when they hit you, you lose two levels. Oh, my oh, God. And, oh, oh yeah. this is the old days, too, where mm -hmm. losing two levels is losing two losing levels. Losing two levels. It's not <laughs> like today where you just you just you just uh, take penalties to your you know abilities. Do Back you have then, that you lose levels. in to uh, uh, to this one shot? Oh, God, um, is it possible that. that these characters will lose levels? And if you're doing so, how are you going to do that and make it manageable? For yeah. These yeah. Yeah. So, so I the uh, the character sheets are going to be um, are going to be sent to in an Excel spreadsheet form with actually quite a bit of <laughs> quite a bit of automation, right? So, <laughs> it's going to have the you know all the different weapons. It's going to have um, all the you know two hits modifications already done. Um, all the armor modifications are already done, so you know you know what your back, you know what your hit armor class zero is. Oh, it is. Um, yeah, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Back to right. Thank Oh my God, I hate it. Thank I have, I have the, uh, I have the, you know, individual combat tables set. So you know, if you're if you're a magic user, your combat tables are different than if you're a fighter right. versus right. if you're a cleric versus if you're a thief. Right. So so you know, depending upon your <laughs> class, you are typically more proficient. Uh, we're going to go back to clerics can only use, you know, dull weapons instead of uh, swords. Um, because they need to knock people out as opposed to their whole bloodless to, kind of thing. Right, but yet, yet Morningstar yeah. Morning is legal. So I never understood that because that's got friggin' little points on it. But that was legal it's for It's not a clerk. blade. It's not a slash. It's not a blade. Yeah, yeah but it's got friggin' points. Piercing. It's piercing. Yeah. <laughs> piercing. But, but, I never you know, got the, the logic of that. Yeah. In all it, my I, 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 that, one, that one I didn't either really so much. Um, um, but, but, but the point is, is that, um, you know, there are some different mechanics, so it's going to be a combat, uh, focused, you know, um, scenario. Okay. There's, there's no doubt about that. It'll be combat focused. There's not going to be the opportunity for a lot of role play. At least I'm not going to bake that in. Okay. 
Sure, um, that's fair. Uh, there's there, but then people are free to role play as much as they want. Um, that being said, um, I'm not going to be, you know, steamrolling or trying to, you know, you're, you're in the dungeon, you're, you're in the second level of a, uh, of a, of a cavern system with no way out except down. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's kind of, that's, you know, kind of the idea is that you have to, you have to kind of see this thing through. And um, it'll be interesting to see how the uh, how how the differences interplay and how things slow down and sped up. And what I'm really going to be interested to see is after after playing through this and after at least playing through some of it, then what we can talk about in future BTR sessions of you know what worked in one E versus what they really have improved in 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 later versions. And I think that's what Kyle was going for whenever we whenever we started this idea off. Is that you know has D and D improved? You know yeah. over the time has it has it improved from one E to three to two to you know all the way through to its current version five? And then where is it going? You know what what lessons can be taken from the earlier versions that can be that can be incorporated into future versions? What have other gaming systems taken from one E and kept? And what have they, or what are they now borrowing from three five and or Pathfinder, or what are they borrowing from from five e? How is how is the how is the hobby in general uh, evolving through uh, through our gaming systems? So I, I I think those are the interesting questions, but it'll be good to understand where we started from, and one e yeah. in a lot of ways was mm -hmm. the uh, was the opening of the door for so many people into this hobby that's uh, after all these years is still going strong. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't think that was my idea, but I will gladly take credit for it. <laughs> it was a really one actually, on my part. I believe I believe the original inception that got to go through all the different versions of D and D and then then it changed because originally when I you you know, I'm running Pathfinder, I'm running Pathfinder 2. Originally, I was going to run one, thinking, okay, we're going to run a 1E. One 1E e. e and 2E are very similar to each other, and then we we're going to run three. So I was going to run Pathfinder, which is basically 3.5. Right. And then, I don't know, was somebody going to run, I don't know if anyone was going to run four. I don't think anyone no was going to was run, gonna run four. No. My five. M5. Oh, Kyle oh. froze. Oh, no! Kyle! <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? He, he has the worst internet service. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, he's, go back. he's back. You're back. You froze, Kyle. Going like this. I am back. Oh, okay. You are back. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're back. back now. You were, okay. yeah. Maybe uh, what I was saying was that my last adventure, the 5e adventure, was to uh, <coughs> demonstrate what I liked about 5e, in which you can really change things aggressively. And the game at the end of the thing still works. And so it's like I borrowed something from 4E. Mm. And while I messed it up, the mechanic itself, I think, is still fully functional and pluggable into 5E, as well as doing some other changes that I did. Um, You're not wrong. You're not uh, wrong. Like it's having a wrong. dog player character. It was good. No, you, you're not wrong. It, it did totally. It worked. It was. Just oh no! I said it worked. I said it I totally didn't make worked. it work. Where it failed yeah. was on me. Personally. No, it didn't. It didn't fail. I'm saying it didn't fail. I'm I made it, it just, too long. But it did. the complaint is it was too long. Therefore, but, the fault lies on me, Carol. Carol. But it still this is wasn't not a failing. Kyle ass kissing uh, <laughs> between the roles. We're actually going to try oh, and talk good. a little bit more about first edition. Let's not talk about what this month was supposed to be. Let's let's talk a little bit yeah, more about yeah, first yeah. edition. Uh, five. What do you want to talk about then? What what? <laughs> Scott, as someone who has now played five e, you played one e. What um, for the players themselves, and maybe on your end of things too? Um, how is play style and DM style changing uh, for these guys this weekend? And hopefully. Maybe they will come back and watch this episode and maybe get some ideas on how they're supposed to operate. Okay. I mean, I kind of had a lot of <laughs> questions because 1E was supposed to be, was that a variant experience level as well, depending on if you were a magic user or a fighter, or was that more earlier on? 
No, it's um, it was variant experience level in that, you know, certain classes advanced faster than others. So I think Sorry. a thief, you only needed 1,500 experience points to get to second level, whereas a magic user, I think you needed 2,500 uh, mm -hmm. or maybe even 4,000. The idea is that the progression was slower. Uh, or maybe it was cleric that was that was the fastest. But anyway, the uh, the uh, point being there is that their playing styles, the way that, the way that um, that that you evolved, one mm -hmm. e and five e mm -hmm. are supposed to be similar in their feel and and love of story, supposedly, right? So allegedly, five e was supposed to be a return back to the storytelling roots of D and D to where the um, um, mechanics were kind of broad strokes, you know, it, it got a little bit crunchy in combat, but, uh, but the rules were so, you know, Gary Gygax was fantastic in it. He was a visionary in many, many, many ways, but what Dave Arnes and more than anyone else really, really brought to, to the, to the D and D the original D and D collaboration was the structure and rule sets because Dave was a, was a, was a, was a miniature war gamer, right? I mean, that, that was his, that was his background. If I'm remembering correctly, he was really involved in the miniature war gaming, a lot of naval war gaming and things like that to where the minutia of details and, and, you know, the distance between here and here is going to cause the, the ballistics of your, of your cannons to fire differently. So, I mean, th there was a lot of, Minutia that needed to be fleshed out in the rules, um, but at the same time, you know, Gary in his first games was very much of having the experience of of playing D and D together with friends. There were stories about he would wall himself off into a corner, right, and you know, you you couldn't have any face to face interaction with him. He would just describe what was going on, and you would have to react and pass notes you know, and things like this. So it was very much of a visceral experience and very much of a collective storytelling experience to where your the 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 mood and the the environment was was just a part of the gameplay experience as anything else. Criticisms came later in later versions that the the chunky mathy parts got to overtake and, and over specialization, you know, the, what you had said, Carol, earlier about 1E e and 2E were very similar, and they were. What you started to see there was the, the class specialization. Yep. Uh, you started seeing, you know, the really the expanding of, of the different types of classes. And that part is something that's player driven. And it's important to understand that that's player driven. That's not, D, that's not DM driven. And the idea was that maybe that had gotten too strong and by, by, by 4E, it was very convoluted, okay? Now, interestingly enough, 5E was able to move back to some of the, by simplifying a lot of the chunky parts of the rule set um, as far as, you know, making advantage and disadvantage um, and giving people the ideas of, a, of an action economy. And then same thing, having this, this concept of bounded accuracy to where you didn't have to have a plus 35 in order to hit something, you know, it, it, it kind of equalized everything within a much more narrow range of numbers, mm -hmm. but they allowed, or they kept, or even encouraged the kit building aspects. So now you have the arcane tricksters and you have you know everyone can basically be whatever type of character that they that they want to be right you don't have the class restrictions that were so prevalent in 1e so you have a lot of flexibility as a character but you don't have all the chunky math parts that bog down the gameplay that you had that was the primary criticism in fourth edition D D. So what we hope to see, what I hope to see is that people will still be able to understand that uh, that 1E is a game where we came from to where it was a collective storytelling experience to where, yes, there were some kind of chunky, clunky parts, especially in combat. There's no doubt and we'll, we'll see some of that. I, I think yep. we really will see some of that. But there was still a lot of open-ended idea about open-ended exploration, a lot of, you know, almost some genuine fear about what's going to happen and the stakes were very high you know you lost characters characters died 
And, you know, you would spend a lot of time, but the time it takes to build a seventh level character, an eighth level character, you've invested maybe a year of your life in that character. Just a year? <laughs> at least. At it least was a longer year. for us. Right. Yeah. So you, you could have invested a lot of time and, um, you know, you didn't get death saves, right? I'm mm -hmm. going to play the old uh, minus 10 hit points and you're dead. Yeah. Yeah, nope, that's that's how it worked. Or that's better hardcore, yet, man. <laughs> or, or bet or better yet, uh crap. I'm trying to remember what the saves were. I remember, you know, there was Rod Staff's ones, poison. Yeah, I, I, I have all that stuff. I, I have all the tables for for the death. Oh. Yeah, I, I have that all all in there. And uh Finger you know, of Death. Fingers yeah. Death got got by got uh got so, a so, very so, early so, version of Taryn. So so you could just you could just absolutely die. And, yep. um, um, you know, the, the point being there is that um, you, 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 had a, you had a stake in the character and people would spend a lot of time, you know, building their character sheets. And I, I have this done in Excel, but at first you really didn't need any more than, you know, a piece of paper. Graph you know, paper. Graph paper. And just I would, a, yeah, I always used to build mine on graph paper. Now I am going to give one bit. I am going to use the... Um, and I've already rolled them up, but the, but the, but the, but the character traits or the, you know, strength and such as that, I'm not doing the strict, strict on, you know, 3d six. So you're not going to have a bunch of, you know, characters with the, you know, intelligence of six and stuff like that. I'm going to use the unearthed arcana uh, rule set. I use that to build a, uh, a, a rolling calculation spreadsheet, which I'll, I'll show you what I did here. If I can pull it up. So I have this, this, uh, this is oh, we can't see. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Oh, wait, maybe we can't. Oh, well, a little up now. Maybe up. Over, oh, move it over to your left. Yes, perfect. So wow. I have a nice oh, big wow. I can't see built, that. Right, wow. that actually will calculate according to a method that these are the four approved methods inside um, uh, Unearthed Arcana about how you roll your, your, uh, your um, um, traits. And then you select the trait, the, the the method that you want to use, and then you roll it, and it does all these to say, oh, 46, and do this, and drop this, and that. So, wow. And then it creates a a slate, and then you can port those over to your to your player, and then that. Guys, you... this is one e. This is where D and D was for nerds. <laughs> it, it was and I'm math, so excited. Man. It was a it. lot of math. <laughs> Don't get me started about Thacko. <laughs> so, so it, 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 yeah, I, I, I spent a lot of, lot of, a lot of time on this, on this, on this Alexa. <laughs> it's great. I know you would. Th you're right. You would. You would spend a ton of time. You would spend a ton of time doing it, and and it and it allowed you to get invested into your characters. Then, if you're invested so much in your characters, then why don't you give them a good backstory? If you don't give them a good backstory, then then you know well why when you're playing wouldn't you wouldn't you act on that backstory you know so it, it really the time that you invested in your character was directly relation or was was directly related to the amount of time that you spend thinking about what your character would do in in certain situations when you have a group of friends that are all so invested and so engaged in something that's what made D, &D so much fun mm -hmm. it's true <laughs> so now as play styles for the players themselves are they going to be able to look at this sheet and i know it's a, a an excel <laughs> spreadsheet which is already hurting my brain my, i was about to say my eyes are already <laughs> crossed it's like <laughs> to be fair i tried to look at that first character you sent me and i was way over my head <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I am going to shorten it to where there's just going to be a character sheet and everything else is automated from there. Okay, awesome. Right, um, so as these players are going through the second level of the dungeon, how much are they relying on the character themselves to get them through situations and how much are they relying on themselves and whatever gear you happen to put on there? Okay, so that's that's a really good question. I thought um, it might be. Yeah, um, because I had to go back to some of the original pregens inside the character, and, and, and sorry, some of the pregens inside the module to understand that you know some of the magic items were specific use magic items, right? 
So I'd, I've gone through some of the, you know, encounters that, that are possible to have, and I'm going to make sure that anything that was requisite, that, that was really, really needed. For instance, you know, someone in the party is going to have wooden stakes for the, for, for the potential vampire at the end. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, potential. Every, yeah. You know, potential, <laughs> right. And there's, uh, um, if there's going to be a, you know, Medusa, if there's going to be, some, there, people are going to have a mirror. Okay. Oh, Lord. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to change a few things. I'm not going to keep everything because I don't want everyone just going out there and buying the module or getting it on drive through RPG net or whatever they buy. The, <laughs> okay. So this is where we're going next because that's how we used to cheat. What fun would right. that be anyways? Cheat, to me, cheating at this through is just... RPG to cheat in first edition. <laughs> that's like, come on. That old. Don't yeah, cheat. That's no about fun. the size of a house. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. What was the so, name of it? One zero zero one zero 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 one one one. So, uh, so, so it 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 uh, it it should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to have them, um, you know, the sheets. I, I'm going to both print them out in PDF, and then I'll have the underlying, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheet as well, with some understanding that that the, that the tables are going to be right there. So when I face a creature with an armor class of this, I know I'm going to have to hit. I'm not going to make you have to calculate Thacko. Thank It'll be friggin' right there. God! I always oh, had a, I'm, I'm I had a, I had a chart. I always would make a chart on my sheet because I could yeah. never do the calculation. No, I'll, 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 I will, I will have that in there. And if you wish to run your character using the Excel spreadsheet, that's fine. But if you just want to print it out on a piece of paper or print out the PDF, that will also work as well. Um, because I'll, I'll have it all working on here. <laughs> and we'll do theater of the mind, right? We're not going to have to map. We're not going to have to do that stuff. Um, you know, and uh, I'll I'll try my best to to have an engaging experience for everyone. And if not, then I'll kill you off in the first thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Seems only well, reasonable. I, this is gonna really be like yeah, it, it's like uh, when I I said I started in two e, but I said two e one e basically very similar. Very similar. Yeah, you, we you, we you, always you did theater in two e. We always did theater of the mind until we well, till we changed to like uh, uh, to three. But right. we always we always did theater in mind for forever. Never used well, minis. It's, it's 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 a little bit. I use a lot of minis now in five e, right? Yeah. Because, and that's and that's really just because the technology is there to where you can you know I I built like a I I, I bought like a little super cheapo flat screen TV. And then I like yeah. built a little case around it, and then put like a little bit of plexiglass, and that that's way so you can cool. have you can have the maps there and the things on top and you can just, you know, it makes it pretty easy and it's, and it's yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's when you're playing there, we, we took that whole thing up with us once uh, to a cabin uh, over, uh, over Christmas a couple of years back. And we had the whole, like, you know, all 10 of us play, uh, you know, um, you know, keep on the borderlands with all the kids. And stuff. Oh, cool. Blast, I mean, they just had a blast <laughs> and it was, and it was, and it was really, really, really cool. Uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we have a lot of fun and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and like I said, it, it's at first I thought I was going to have to, I was going to have to be on Saturday. I do want to say um, uh, on Sunday, my schedule has changed. I can do Saturday or Sunday. So I hate to keep springing on this, Frank. I really hate to, but if it's easier for everyone, I can do Saturday. Okay, Sunday is no longer a requirement. I can do Saturday or Sunday. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, okay. it was going to have to be on, be on Sunday? Sunday? It was, but now, like I said, I'm flexible. Oh, good. Saturday or Sunday. I'm flexible, oh, Saturday or Sunday. So if it be needs to be Saturday, no problem. Oh, and, right. you know, so that's, that's, that's where I'm at with that. And uh, um, looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. No, that's. That's exciting. Uh, I'm already jumping with joy and excitement. And to be fair, I'm not even going to be playing in it. Hey, hey, he uh, said he has five. He said he's five characters. Come on, Frank, make it happen. Five like, people Kyle, are already on the list there. You know what? You know what? I give up my seat so you can play if you want to no, play that no, much. No, no I'm, anyway, I'm serious. I, 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 no butt kissing right uh, now, Carol. Uh, 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 it's I'm not. trying to get to the end of the show. Stop, stop, stop being a good co-host. So, <laughs> final thoughts. David, 
anything you're looking forward to this uh, uh, this week? I know you've got cacophony where you guys got to make a cacophony. big decision. And uh, uh, anything about Scott's one e that he's running? Are you planning on I, watching that? I can't. I can't wait. I'm a little overwhelmed by the math that'll be involved, <laughs> it's and I'm not, not even playing. I'm. It's, I'm watching. <laughs> Dave, so, it's not. It's not. You that won't bad. notice it. It's you, not. You really it's not it. that yeah. bad. Okay. No. You, I, it sounds bad, but it's not. I'm excited. I can't wait to see the game. I think it's going to be awesome. So Scott, it's just like, yeah, to hear you talk about this. I mean, because. You know, I tried to immerse myself in D and D when it first came out, and it just never happened. So it's been a later in life thing. But right. yeah, this is great just to see some of the old stuff just come right back out. So got the nerd cool. juices flowing. All yeah. right, Carol, <laughs> anything you're looking forward to this week? I know you're one of the people who are going to be playing on here. Well, no, that's looking? that's not definite. That's whether or not it's he's got a, he's got a fourth that he's already got. I guess if he opens oh. up to five, but. We can argue that particular. Uh, if I do get to play, I look for boy, this will be an awesome trip down memory lane because it's the set. Now, granted, I played second, not first. Um, I didn't start until the very late 80s. And I really didn't start rolling until like, uh, you know, when I was in college. So 89. It'll 89. be very similar. The, the, yeah, they're very, very, very they're similar. Be- I think two, basically, it's back. One is backwards compatible to two. Yeah. It is. Three is when it just blew everything out of the water. In yeah. fact, that was one of the big complaints when it went to three is that it, it was incompatible with all the two. So we're all griping because, well, now we have to buy all new books, blah, 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 and learn this whole new system. <laughs> and we didn't switch over right away either because of that. And then eventually we we're like, all right, what the hell? And we found we really like three. Uh, and I did not miss the, uh, Thacko in the least, but <laughs> but but that's the thing is it'll be a really good uh, it'll be a really good trip down memory lane for for sure if I if I do get to play. That's why I don't play worst edition anymore. Screw that crap. <laughs> that's what I heard anyway. All yeah. right, Scott. I, I don't. I'm not going to have much final thoughts. <laughs> although I will ramble off the stuff at the end. Scott, uh, uh, like myself, you have someone who is new to D and D. I believe who is right. going Kai, yes. to be introduced to first edition. <laughs> so many Kai. years later, Good and so God. many. <laughs> that's Great. the best Thanks. part of having yeah. someone brand new. That's going to be the first impression. Okay. Any, I'll, I'll try not to kill them too quickly. <laughs> Don't give them the mage. Don't give them the mage. Mages had no durability back then. Oh man. D four hit points. And I mean, I'm constant. trying to think how many. I think the mage is like 23 hit points. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> At what level again? Seventh level. Seven. 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 They seven. Were a D4 for it's a D4. It's supposed to be good, though. Yeah? D4 hey, plus con. I can and- see it. As soon as this, this person says, which one is the D4? <laughs> Bam, fireball. You know, that's- <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, yeah, D4 plus your constitution. And, right. you know, of course, you don't put your prime stat when you're a wizard in your constitution. Of course, you put in intelligence. Right. So maybe your secondary would be your... Because. It's either con or dex. That's what you yeah. always did. To, you yeah. either, you either wanted to get still. Yeah. Man, things haven't changed much either. Because you, had no you still armor, tend to right? do that. You know. No, yeah. I had no armor and no the mage help. armor didn't exist back then. Right. Am I right? Right. You had yeah. shield, but that's about it. Right. You yeah. had. Uh, you, you, and and I'll you... I'll you know. I'm just imagining this guy. He bought the player's handbook and everything like that. Oh, I'm going to be playing D and D for the first time. We're not playing that edition. We're going original. <laughs> I hope they realize <laughs> what uh, they're getting into. <laughs> I'd like to take an opportunity attack. That does, does, does what's, what's did not that? exist. But you know, what's funny is that, that that if you moved away, you just got hit. Right? That's that's just what it is. If you moved yeah. away, there was no idea of I choose to take the disengage action. Nope, you just got hit. You just <laughs> got hit. You know, that's that's what it is. You you, you just got hit. So th- there's a lot of little stuff. And I may actually some of those things I may tweak down because 
there, there may be a little bit too much of the minutia of the rules that I won't be able to gather everyone, you know, that I, I would just, we just can't get into that. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, you know, if you want to do that, then you have to have, well, if you want to cast that spell, um, which components are you going to use? Yeah. That you know, and, and I mean, right. There, there, there's, there's the idea of that I'm not going to. This is not going to be a rules lawyer type, t- type of thing. Where I'm <coughs> yeah. And crack open the DMG and go through it and say, nope. According to this, you can't do that. Sorry. Oh no, God, I, I couldn't. I don't even remember well enough. Like all the minutia of, of, of second. No, 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 no. it's still going to be. What would you like to do? And then you know, see, see how we're going to do it, and then. That's that's how we're gonna be 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 uh, you know sorting things out. That's all okay? right. I think everyone's right. looking forward to that. Uh, so guys, stay tuned. Uh, not stay tuned like right after this because there's gonna be nothing out of this. We might get like some O Fortuna, but then it's gonna end. Uh, <laughs> I don't but think no, we're getting O Fortuna. Here, don't move from the computer, and Thursday you'll be able to see Cacophony which may no longer be called Cacophony because they won't be there. It's still going to be thing. Cacophony. It's just the Adventurer's <laughs> Guild. So, uh, yeah, we... I was about to say, I got the shirt. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> no, that's how you sell more merchandise. Than you that's change. true. <laughs> that is true, Frank. We got to think of that. So. Uh, and then we have either Saturday or Sunday, uh, uh, DM Poobah Scott, our very own is going to be running first edition for uh, four to five players. Uh, uh, if you've never seen it before, I haven't heard of it. It's something you do want to drop everything for. I'm going to be holding my child and then chucking him into his bedroom <laughs> just to make sure I get here on time. He's got a hardish head. It'll be fine. The soft spot. You've already <laughs> tested that out. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mostly you online. <laughs> uh, and then I don't know if we're still doing the Sunday game with the Frank family, but uh, if there is, then you can see that there too. And you'll see us again on Tuesday as we talk about a, a new thing, but uh, until then, you know, follow <laughs> us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our archives on YouTube or on Twitch here. You can sub to us. Uh, uh, if you want to shoot the shit about D&D or, and talk about some first edition stuff and some five edition, you know, uh, uh, be an old man like Frank and say, I remember back in the day, uh, you can come over to our Discord channel. Uh, if you want to get some cool RPG gifts, stuff like that, visit our store. Uh, it's got some interesting things. Um, unfortunately, some dongless beer which is a that's not topic. on the store uh, but most importantly uh, uh we <laughs> still may never have get there. hey hey carol 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 shh, shh. you're not a co-host anymore let me do my <laughs> spiel but now most importantly if you want to actually take part i mean for first edition right now is kind of all filled up but we do have a pathfinder 2 e game we do have a uh, blue rose which is coming there up later go. on uh, uh, and in fact, starting next year, there's going to be a new campaign going on every other Saturday and more one shots to come. Uh, uh, give us contact, give a shout out over at Murder Hobo, uh, M Hobo Inc. on Twitter or Gmail. Um, and once again, let's thank the sponsors Pirate, Dog Dice, Odd Fish Games. I think I read everything off this list well enough. <laughs> uh, did I did you did uh, I don't know if you can hear uh, Frank he's telling me what a good job I am and oh, <laughs> I could pat my that pat is the sweetest the thing you, th- thank you I really appreciate you saying that Frank about how wonderful <laughs> I did last Saturday and how much of a better better dungeon master I oh. am uh, uh, but that'll be it everybody let's everyone wave say goodnight uh Watch the shows. It'll be good this week.